Hello, and thank you for reading my article in this month's Envision magazine. As promised, I wanted to give you a little bit more information on bettering your communication. Now, you're going to see right here, we're not in the Spexy studio. We're actually in the Laybach in New York U.S. headquarters, where they are prepping for the Southern Independent Optical Show. Now, when it comes to proper communication, proper communication, when you are selling to your patient, what it does is it builds trust. And so you need to find ways to better your communication with your patients to build that trust during the, sell the sales process. Part number one, stop leaving so much up to patients when you ask them yes or no questions. Just like I referred to in the article, when I ask my kid if he wants vegetables with dinner tonight, of course he's going to say no. But if I ask him if he wants peas or carrots, he's going to have to choose. You'll get a little different response. And you can go about doing the exact same thing when it comes to your day-to-day -day conversations with your patients that you're having in the office. So think about all of the things that you are saying to your patients daily and keep a little list of what's going on in your office, the things that you're saying and things that maybe your coworkers are saying as well and reflect upon that to be able to really see how often you're using yes or no questions and the other ridiculous things that we happen to say to our patients that we don't even realize that we're doing. Once you can identify the yes or no questions that you're using, for example, would you like to get glasses today? No! Don't say that. We don't say, would you or do you want to get glasses today? Because what they hear is, do I want to spend a thousand dollars on glasses today? No, no, they do not. <laughs> Better things to ask your patients are things like, were you wanting to go with a similar look that you had last year? Something a little different. That will keep the conversation open with the patient. Next, be equipped with responses. We all have patients that have objections, right? Things like, oh, I'm gonna take my prescription and go online, or, you know, I'm just gonna get what my insurance covers. The thing that I want you to do is be equipped with a response. And the first thing that I'm gonna have you do is go about making a list of objections that you hear from patients in your office, okay? Then what you're going to do is you're gonna start rethinking what they could possibly mean. So when they say, you know what, I, want, I just want what my insurance covers, Maybe they're, you know, can't afford it, which is fine. Maybe they're really cheap. <laughs> they just don't see any value in glasses, yet they have their, you know, $500 Jordans on. Or it could be that maybe the HR person at their office told them that they had a really rad coverage for their insurance. They think that they're going to get a whole lot of value there in your office. So once you start thinking of alternatives, you can keep the conversation open a little bit more. So let's take a look at a few different things that patients say and some responses that we could have queued up in our back pocket because so many of us hear the same objections all the time. Patient walks in, happy to see you and says, I just wanna let you know that I'm only gonna be getting my exam today. I'm gonna be taking my prescription with me. What if you were queued up with a response? Oh, that's so exciting. Do you have a pair of glasses already picked out? I ask because we have these new styles and I've been trying to get people's opinions on them. Come here, let me show you what they look like. That is so much more powerful than, oh, okay, yeah, um, here's your prescription, right? Let's look at another one. What about when your patient says, I just want what my insurance covers? You could very easily say, well, let's take a look here. Now your insurance is a contribution plan, so they're going to contribute $150 towards a frame, then discount whatever is left over. Now, this is where my expertise comes in. I'm going to encourage you to come out with me. We're gonna, we're gonna choose the styles that you really like, and then I'm going to help to find you know, what you really love, and we're gonna narrow down kind of what your, um, what's closer to your budget that you're looking at. What's really great about this is you're keeping them from limiting themselves from trying on frames that are really fabulous and obviously outside of their insurance coverage because it's one of those things with Retail 101, when you get people that are going to buy to touch things, they are much more likely to fall in love with that product and it'll give them a chance again to be able to just try it on. So I encourage you to make a list of objections that you hear in your office all the time and then really sit down and think about really great responses that do not involve yes or no questions. Now, the last point from the article is inquire and listen. Now, I get it. We hear the same things from patients over and over and over again every single day. However, patients want to be heard. They want to make sure that 
um, you know what they're going through. Yes, you know what they're already going to say, but you need to take time to listen to what they're saying and ask them questions. Pretend like it's the very first time you're hearing it. So for example, when patients are looking to possibly leave the office and take their prescription, you could say something like, oh, was there something in particular that you were looking for that we didn't have? Or you can say, you know what, I'm always trying to improve our optical. Do you mind giving me a little bit of feedback on what it is that we didn't have in the office? And because it could very well be that they looked up at your sea of frames that just looks like a big monotonous sea of constant you know rectangular black frames and they didn't even realize that there were different options up there so getting them talking and keeping that communication open and listening to them will allow for you to be able to have the opportunity to show them more product in your office now i encourage you to become a better communicator and really take time to listen to your patients and then take the time to hear what they are telling you and write down different responses. This is going to be the most powerful thing because when you write it down, you can refine it a little bit more and refine it a little bit more and put your own little spin and character on it. And this will allow for you to have so much more open communication and better sales in your office. Communication is sales. We don't need to be afraid of sales. We just need to equip ourselves with proper responses to be able to confidently have this conversation with our patients. Till next month, be spexy.